So back to the grainy webcam for this because this is a just sort of opinion piece and I sometimes make these a couple of times before I'm happy with what I've said and I should probably just prepare some actual notes <laughs> to rectify that but I don't know I don't quite want to do that although I do have a small presentation prepared but it's because it's more about just expressing something that I've thought and experienced because I frequently go down different YouTube rabbit holes and lately I've mostly been doing practical ones but you know, tutorials and stuff including on how to make videos a bit better although most of that is actually learning to use Blender I'm actually comfortable with at least open shot editing at this point but I sometimes go down the rabbit hole of sort of you know opinion and political youtubers and they're almost always leftist youtubers and this time I found uh, Mia Mulder who I probably would have watched a video or two of just from you know oh another you know trans leftist youtuber there's you know a surprising or maybe unsurprising depending on your point of view number of those I guess I could maybe say of us, but I'm not really, I mean, I am a left-leaning person, but I'm not really, I'm not like a left tuber or a bread tuber or anything like that. It's not what my content is generally about. But the thing about her is that she mentioned an experience that she had that struck several chords with me because she also, in her youth, tried to join, well, she tried to join her country's military, which is Sweden. And it's a bit different, but it, I don't know. It struck me in a particular way, because she mentioned some things that I also experienced. Although my opinions are probably a little bit different than hers. I always seem to come back to this topic, though, of, like, you know, when, if ever, is it right to kill someone, you know, whether, you know, in a war or in self-defense, and I don't really have an answer to that question, but... the military kind of rides a fine line in this country at least where they emphasize the need to be ready to kill people but without encouraging you to completely forget that it, it is wrong there's a reason for the phrase necessary evil And I'm making this in part because I'd like to finally send my channel's videos to my best friend from undergraduate, Matt. Matt, if you're watching this, don't go back and watch my garbage takes from when I was drunk and working at Sandia and convinced that, you know, World War III was imminent. But I met Matt, or met you if Matt is the one watching, when I was in one semester of ROTC to try to join the Air Force and become a pilot, and even though it's kind of deeply embedded in our friendship that we both love airplanes, sometimes kind of forget that ROTC is actually how we met. he went on to have a career as an Air Force pilot, and I ended up going into condensed matter physics because 
amongst other things, I thought I'd never get a security clearance, so I figured I'd pick something where I wouldn't need one. Although, ironically, I ended up briefly having one when I was working at Sandia. But Mia Mulder tried to join the Swedish Navy, uh, and she was in junior ROTC, which is high school, and it's, you know, to sort of try it out and prepare you a little bit if you want to either enlist directly out of high school or go to uh, regular ROTC in college to become an officer. And she did not end up doing either one of those things, although apparently she still wanted to. And her reason was basically that she came out as trans and the Swedish military, at least at that time, was not admitting any trans people. Uh, my reason is far less uh, sympathetic than that. I got arrested for doing some pretty reckless things and I don't want to blame it on the people I got arrested with, but um, yeah, I, I mean, I just won't. I should not have done those things. I will say, if you go and look it up, the, in my mind, worst part about it was not me. <laughs> um, straight up, I had nothing to do with the concerning things, because there was... I helped those kids make explosives, and one of them... Most of them were just stupid kids like me. One of them I found kind of concerning. And of course, he's the one that now has kind of been working his way up in the corporate world. Um, anyways. <laughs> I did some... St I did really stupid stuff because I thought it was fun to blow things up. And, you know... <laughs> it just turns out, you know, it wasn't my path in life to go fly fighter jets and drop bombs for a living. And, well, maybe that's for a reason. Maybe there's a reason that my friend did go fly, but did not end up getting an aircraft that would ever drop any bombs. You know, although he and I both wanted fighters because everyone wants fighters. Mia Mulder mentioned a bunch of reasons that people try to join the military, and amongst them was not the reason that, the biggest reason that motivated both of us, which is that there are certain careers that you can only have in the military. Military aviation is one of them. You can be a pilot, you know, just in the civilian world. In fact, being an airline pilot is a pretty good gig. Being a pilot in general is a huge privilege, and it's amazing. But being a military pilot, you just get to do a lot of cool things, and there's no civilian flying job where you can fly an airplane that, you know, accelerates at nine times the force of gravity in a turn, and can fly at 50,000 feet, and can fly supersonic and all these other super cool things. And there's also not really much in the way of civilian flying where you can do the kind of stuff that he gets to do now, where he does a lot of really low altitude, flying at high speed and low altitude, and doing a bunch of cool stuff. And also, quite frankly, you know, I guess this does segue into some of the reasons she did mention, it's like, you know, be becoming a actual commercial airline pilot is pretty expensive. Um, just getting a private pilot's license is already, you know, ha comes with a substantial price tag, although it's more affordable than you might think. It's generally a, a few thousand dollars, but not tens of thousands, but it can end up costing a couple, you know, 20, 30 grand to get a commercial pilot's license and get to the point where you can uh, start making money as a pilot. And then you, it's still going to take a while to get to fly airliners versus the military, you join the military, you, know, you can just, you know, they'll put you through flight training. She said a lot of why people join is for their financial benefits, but she also said in Sweden, you already get most of those things, you know. you In Sweden, they already have universal health care and pretty generous educational uh, grants. Um, 
some of them are loans, but still, you can basically, you know, go to college with no money up front, pretty much guaranteed in Sweden. And you never have to worry about having health care. But people joined, nonetheless. She had several of usual reasons. People want to go on something they perceive as, do something they perceive as adventurous. And people want to go and do something they perceive as good. The military, and especially the minds of young people, often does, you know, fit the bill for both of those things. And the question, inevitably, is how good is it and how much adventure is there? In both cases, it depends. I'll say that when me and Matt were in ROTC, I, I at least felt like there was an understanding amongst most of the people there that we were there to defend democracy, and that meant, you know, doing whatever mission the democratically elected government of our country decided. And the feedback loop on making that good and ethical was that we are citizens of that country, and we have the ability to both to vote and to engage in political activism and we believed the military was a good thing because it could ensure the continued ability to do that which is not to be taken for granted there are always powers that be that would like to make it otherwise but although that was definitely me and Matt's general opinion, and I'd say it was the opinion of, you know, 90% of the ROTC detachment, I can't say that it was true of 100% of them. And that reminds me of something else that Mia Mulder said, where she said, there were some people she met in JROTC who said some pretty concerning stuff. And they basically indicated to her, you know, when they didn't think anybody else was listening and that they might find somebody to share their, that shared their opinions, you know, somebody that she met there said they wanted to, you know, go to the Middle East and kill people because they just believed those people didn't deserve to live. And I don't have a word for that attitude other than evil. Because there are human beings, unfortunately, in the world that have intentions like that. And I met some people like that in ROTC, too. And the thing that struck me, although I don't want to press this too far, because things slipped through the cracks, is she said that person did not end up joining the Swedish Navy. And the people I met in ROTC that didn't have exactly that attitude, but that had very concerning attitudes towards violence and their role in it, did not end up joining the Air Force. And I didn't end up joining the U.S. Air Force, Mia Mulder did not end up joining the Swedish Navy, but for other reasons. But I don't know. I don't want to say that that means that, oh, the system works, they filter out anybody with any, you know, malicious intent, because as we've unfortunately seen with things like Abu Ghraib prison scandal and whatnot, people like that absolutely can end up in the military. But what I will say is that, <laughs> so one of the people that I met like this 
he had, shall we say, some interesting attitudes with regards to the Geneva Convention. And he actually asked me dur during a training session, like, you know, how do we treat people that we capture in the Middle East? And I said, you know, in accordance with the Geneva Conventions as required by international law, thinking that, oh, you know, I'm being a good cadet. That's the official answer. And he said, no, they don't get the Geneva Convention because they're terrorists. And I was like, hmm, that's really concerning. Um, that guy turns out colorblind. And guess what? He still could have joined the Air Force, but when he found out he was colorblind, he just straight up rage quit. So that was definitely a moment that when I found that out, I was like, you know, maybe there really is someone up there looking out for us. Because, uh, like, Matt is Matt knows the person I'm talking about where they were briefly in a sort of, like, cadet leadership position. Then they found out they were colorblind and they quit. And I was just like, oh, thank God. <laughs> you know, um, that person that does not think the Geneva Conventions should apply... Uh, is not going to be in a position to potentially kill someone. That's very good. Um, you know, um, another guy, just kind of an overall jerk, to be honest. Um, somebody that one time he was making some fairly sexist comments, and in an attempt to defuse the situation, I started talking about statistics, which my comments weren't really that great either, but I was just trying to defuse away from the overt sexism towards let's talk about math instead. And... And uh, he, he, all he did was said, nerd, and picked me up and tried to put me in the trash can. And I was just like, but he wasn't even strong enough to do it. I was just like, wow, what a friggin' idiot. <laughs> um, he also did not get a pilot slot because he just didn't. Uh, and he also rage quit. Um, and I can't think of anybody else that concerned me. And everybody I know that did end up joining... I generally thought of as a pretty solid person. I didn't agree with everybody on everything. In fact, most of the detachment was a lot more politically conservative than me or Matt. That's part of another reason that we sort of became friends was because there's not a lot of sort of left-leaning people. I'd say I'd, it's not that extreme. I'd say it's about a three-quarters, one-quarter split or something like that. Um, but, you know, we still kind of, you know, uh, became friends over that. It, there was there were several of us that became friends um because we were commuting back and forth between different schools to, to do ROTC. Uh, and so some of us that went to a different school, once the one school where we had to commute to the other school, uh, we all kind of got to know each other, but uh, Matt and I became very close friends. Um, for, I don't know, just a bunch of reasons. And like, I don't know. <laughs> Mia Mulder proceeds on with several other lines of analysis and I'm still not really satisfied with what I've been saying because like it always boils down to me just trying to say in some roundabout way like violence is wrong and we should never forget that but we also shouldn't forget the things that have happened through human history and I mean not to be cheesy but people who have you know died sacrificed their lives so that we can continue to have freedom and democracy but that you know there's it's always like but 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 that should never be an excuse for jingoism either And I wanted to segue into talking about this military-industrial complex, but I think that'll have to be its own segment. Um, other than that, I want to say it's uh, the military-industrial complex. It is a thing. It is bad. But it's a problem that has actually been getting better, not worse, for about 50 years. And that doesn't mean that we should be complacent or that we should not try to make it better. But I just want to express that, like, the situation is not all terrible. Like, we can make things better, and they're actually have been getting better. So if we sort of keep up the good work and continue to strive for a more peaceful world, I don't know, maybe the 
you know, jerks that just want to go kill people that look different from them will continue to turn out to be colorblind. <laughs> Again, I can't say for sure if there's a god or not, but, you know, sometimes things just work out. Alright, that'll probably do it. Peace.